Hello, today we're going to talk about um, structure 1.1.3, which is uh, part of IV Chemistry HL and SL. And um, we're going to focus today on the temperature in Kelvin um, as a measure of average kinetic energy of particles. So like we just mentioned, uh, temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles in a sample. Um, and it definitely we need to focus on that word average. So in a particular sample, you're going to have particles that have lower kinetic energy and are moving slower and higher kinetic energy and are moving faster. But on average, it will um, be the same as any other sample at that same temperature. So temperature measures average kinetic energy. Um, briefly, uh, kinetic energy is equal to uh, 1 half mv squared. Uh, where M is the mass and V is velocity. So if you have two samples at the same temperature, so the same kinetic energy, but one of them has a larger mass, it must have a smaller velocity to account for that um, larger mass. Um, so we'll spend a little bit more time with that in a later section, but I just wanted to mention it at the moment. Now, um, the temperature scales, uh, the really common ones, of course, Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin, but we're not going to focus on Fahrenheit um, in this class. We're going to look at uh, Celsius, or degrees Celsius, and Kelvin. And the Celsius scale is based off of water, and where 0 degrees Celsius is the freezing point of water, and 100 degrees Celsius is the boiling point of water. Um, so that makes it really useful for chemists where a lot of times we're using water-based systems. Um, so below zero is possible on the Celsius scale, but it is not possible on the Kelvin scale. On the Kelvin scale, you have zero Kelvin, which is absolute zero. Absolute zero is the, the lowest temperature. It's when there's no motion whatsoever. So that's why it's useful when we're looking at um, temperature as an average kinetic energy. Well, zero Kelvin means that there's no movement, no temperature. Okay. So um, really, it's what they did is they took the um, increments for the Celsius scale to create the increments for the Kelvin scale. They just shifted it downward to make zero actually mean zero. So zero Celsius is equivalent to um, negative 273 point, I'm sorry, uh, to positive, I was looking at the wrong side, uh, 273.15 Kelvin. And then if I were to go this way, we'd have um, zero Kelvin is equal to negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. So that is the difference there. Um, if I were to go to the boiling point of water at 100 degrees Celsius, it's going to be at 373.15 Kelvin. And so you'll notice that there's still 100 increments between those two temperatures, just like you have in the Celsius scale. So that's going to come up relatively frequently. When you're looking at a difference in temperature, you'll have the same difference whether you're using Celsius or Kelvin because the increments are the same. Um, it's just Kelvin will have no negative numbers. Celsius could have negative numbers. Typically, we're going to use the Kelvin scale then because it relates exactly to the concept of temperature and average kinetic energy, and it has no negative values that can mess up our calculations. Required when we're measuring temperature. So if you have a digital measuring device for temperature, a temperature probe, um, you want to include all of the digits possible that are given on your digital device. So in this um, scenario, there are four significant figures, and the last one, the five, is your estimated digit. Um, so make sure that you record all of the possible ones. One note about temperature probes is that they measure typically right at the tip. So make sure that you're not placing it. Um, if you're doing something on a hot plate, you're not placing it directly against the bottom of your container or it will pick up the temperature more of the hot plate than the solution as a whole. Now, if you have um, an analog thermometer like this, I say analog, but it's just like a, a typical thermometer. They don't typically use mercury anymore um, because it can be more dangerous. They'll use typically a colored alcohol solution. But anyway, um, 
um, when the um, when you're reading a thermometer like this, you want to um, record all of the digits that you know, plus one that you estimate. So in this scenario, I know that it is above 11, this is the mark for 11. So it's 11 point something, and then I can estimate another digit. So I'm going to estimate it's maybe 11.2 degrees Celsius. Um, so this one would have three significant digits, and the two is my estimated. Um, now, some people will say that you need to, when you're estimating, your estimated digit should be a 0 or a 5. Um, I don't think that's 100% necessary, uh, as long as you're consistent with how you are um, measuring and estimating, and you're using the correct number of significant digits. Okay, so now let's look at heating curves. Uh, heating curves relate to changes of state. Um, so we're going to label this energy and temperature. So as I'm adding energy, what is happening to the temperature um, of the substance or the average kinetic energy? Okay. So um, typically in an idealized graph will look like this, where you have uh, solid substance, liquid substance, gaseous substance, and then um, your changes of state uh, you have, um, and we're assuming we're going just to the right, so we'll have melting, which is also called fusion, and then here we have vaporization. Now, um, you'll notice that during the changes of state, the temperature stays constant. Okay, so when we're adding the energy in to a solid, we're, it's going to speed up the particles, make them move faster, until it reaches the melting point. So that is the melting point temperature. When it reaches the melting point, then the energy is going to be used to break intermolecular forces, break up those attractions between the particles of the solid. Not all of them, but some of them. And then once it is completely a liquid, that energy can be used to make the motion of the particles increase again until it reaches the boiling point. And when it reaches the boiling point, then it's going to keep a constant temperature. You're using the energy to break all of the remaining intermolecular forces between the particles um, until it is completely a gas, and then the energy will be um, used to create, uh, to make the particles move faster again. So um, that is the essentials for the heating curve. Now, um, typically this uh, heating curve will be considered at a constant pressure. Um, also, there's a lot of um, potential calculations you can do with the heating curve, uh, such as finding the actual amount of energy it takes for each of those sections. Um, but that uh, will come a little bit later in the course. Um, for now, you need to be able to read one of these and determine um, the melting point and the boiling point and the state of matter at any given point. Now, you could, you could go backwards. Um, you could have the reverse direction, you're removing energy, um, and then it would just be flipped, uh, and then it would be undergoing condensation and freezing. Um, so that's your essentials for heating curves. Now we talked about um, Kelvin, Kelvin being our uh, main unit for temperature because it has uh, no negative numbers um, and it follows the same increments as the Celsius scale, um, but Kelvin is our SI unit for temperature. And um, we want to take just a quick minute and look at the, um, all of the different SI units that we need to be using for this class. So the SI unit for time is seconds. Um, we use meters for length, and then as a result, we use um, square meters for area and cubic meters for uh, volume. And then um, we use grams or kilograms. Kilograms is really the uh, SI unit, but um, in chemistry it makes more sense sometimes to just use gram uh, because of the amount used but that is the SI unit for mass. Um, we'll use amps 
or the ampere, which is our unit for electric current. Um, we use the mole, which is our uh, unit for number of things or counting things, which is very important in chemistry. Um, we'll use joules for energy is our SI unit. Um, we use coulombs for the quantity of charge. Um, there are other SI units, but those are the ones that we typically use in this class. I would say a good um, kind of uh, mental uh, trick that you can use to um, be very, very aware of the, the volume. I know in, in chemistry a lot we use liters and milliliters. Um, one milliliter is equal to one uh, cubic centimeter, and then uh, one liter is equal to one cubic decimeter. So that's a nice, easy one to remember when you're converting um, these liters, which are not SI units, into um, meters cubed, which are the SI unit. So just be careful with that. Okay, so um, this example problem, we need to convert temperatures. To go from Celsius to Kelvin, we need to add that uh, 273.15 that we talked about. And um, 25 plus 273.15 is 298.15 Kelvin. And um, for the second example, negative 25 degrees Celsius, we're still going to add 273.15, and we get uh, 248. 0.15 uh, Kelvin, and that's how you do those conversions. Our second example here, we want to draw the heating curve for water. We want to show the melting and boiling points. So remember, heating curve, uh, solid, melting, liquid, vaporizing, gas. And we want to show the melting and boiling points on the y-axis. Remember, y-axis is temperature. So for water, the um, melting point for water, the freezing point for water is zero degrees Celsius. And for uh, vaporization, it is 100 degrees Celsius. Now, if you want, you could put that into SI unit, so Kelvin. So, um, two, I'm sorry, 373.15 Kelvin or uh, 273.15 Kelvin on your uh, y axis there. Now, if this is not your first chemistry class, you can start thinking about these linking questions. So um, in your intro to chemistry class, hopefully you talked about there's a graphical distribution of kinetic energy values of particles in a sample. Um, and then that's at a particular temperature. Um, this is called a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve. Um, we will get to that uh, later in the curriculum, but it does um, help us relate the um, distribution um, for the kinetic energy values. Uh, so if this is not your first chemistry class, you should go back and look at those distribution curves. And then our other linking question here, what must happen to particles for a chemical reaction to occur? So think back to your um, previous uh, chemistry class. You can also look back at uh, structure 1.1.1 with the differences with the chemical reaction and physical changes. Um, so we can link that um, back to this section.